Hi everybody, my name is Marilyn Scholl and I'm the manager of CDS Consulting Co-op. And I remember the days when everybody showed up to unload the truck, when we were paid in discounts, and if there was a budget, the board probably created it. As our co-ops have grown and matured and become more impactful business, some people mourn that loss of member involvement. But for me, I really celebrate that. We've made such a difference in, in people's lives. We've made a difference by creating a, a, a cooperative economy. We've changed the way that, that Americans think about food. Uh, we've built a local agricultural system where farms and local producers have a market for their products. It's good that we've, uh, that we've grown, that we've become more impactful businesses. And as we've grown, we're able to meet more and more needs of more and more people. So that got me to thinking about needs and what is it that people need. So one place I looked was at the International Cooperative Alliance's Statement of Cooperative Identity, which also includes the cooperative principles and values. A cooperative is people united to meet their economic, social, and cultural needs and aspirations. Economic, social, and cultural needs and aspirations. So in thinking about those three made me think of another set of needs, um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You might remember from Psychology 101 that Maslow's theory is that, that people have a hierarchy of need and if we are able to satisfy our lower level need that will be motivated to move on to a higher level of need. But if that need isn't satisfied, if a need isn't satisfied, then we become fearful and anxious and depressed. So at the very bottom of Maslow's hierarchy of needs are the physiological needs. Uh, we need something to eat. We need something to drink. So if that need is satisfied, then our next level of need, according to Maslow, is our need for safety, security, protection. We need a place to live. But if we're hungry, we'll give up that sense of safety in order to get something to eat. After safety comes belonging. Human beings are social animals. We want to be a part of a group. We want to be accepted. For Maslow, the next need is self-esteem. We need to be recognized for what we've contributed. And the, finally, self-actualization, the growth and development of human beings. So Maslow conducted a career's worth of research to come up with his theory. And while it's not a perfect fit, I see real similarities with how people are motivated to participate in their cooperative. And my translation at the bottom is using the co-op shopping. If a co-op is not meeting people's needs for a shopping environment that they want, the kinds of products and services that they're looking for, it won't survive as a business. And people won't seek any higher level of involvement. This level of involvement includes both members and non-members. Moving up the participation hierarchy, some people will choose to join the co-op, and others won't, and that's okay. Next on the hierarchy comes a sense of belonging. Whether you've joined the co-op or not, co-ops create a sense of we, being part of something, belonging to a community. And to meet their self-esteem and self-actualization need, some people want to get more involved in the co-op and become leaders and advocates for the cooperative. Today I want to focus a little bit more on belonging and how co-ops can be a place of creating community and creating a sense of belonging for people. As Maslow understood, we are really programmed to want to be a part of a group. In fact, at one point, it was a matter of survival to be a part of a tribe or a group of people. Even today, if we aren't feeling a part of a group or if we aren't connected with others, we feel lonely and isolated, alienated, and can become depressed. Belonging is closely related to acceptance. Everyone's welcome. Anyone can join. Co-ops are places where people belong, whether they join or not. They can be a part of it. Where else do you hear customers say, hey, do we carry such and such, or could we do something or the other? We're building community. We're meeting people's needs for belonging. But what can we do to even build on this, to make it even stronger and more palpable for people? One of my co-op heroes, Brett Fairbairn, has said, meetings and voting are technologies of the last century. So we don't need to abandon a voting membership or give up annual meetings, but we do need to be innovative and creative in finding new ways for people to engage and participate in the cooperative. Certainly a good place to start is in the store itself, creating a welcoming environment with great customer service where everyone feels included, welcome, and appreciated. 
Beyond that, I want to share a few examples of what some co-ops are doing to create community, to build that sense of belonging, to create the we. At First Alternative in Corvallis, Oregon, co-op shoppers have saved over a half a million bags by bringing their own bag. That translates into about 800 trees. Every time the, a shopper brings their own bag, the co-op gives them a bean that's worth five cents and they can put it in the bin of their choice to donate that to a local community organization. Together, they've donated over $75,000 to community organizations in their town. And this year, the Food Marketing Institute gave First Alternative a community service award in recognition of this work. Together, we make a difference. At PCC in Seattle, the Kids Pick program allows kids to, to discover for themselves that healthy and nutritious food can also be delicious. The easy to spot Kids Pick signs help parents know which products have been approved by 75% of the kids that have tasted them. We belong here. In my hometown of Putney, Vermont, the food co-op sponsors a community harvest dinner every year in collaboration with the local elementary school. Tables are set up out in the ball fields. Food is dished up in the gym. In collaboration with the art teacher, all the kids make lanterns, paper lanterns, that are decorated and hung over the table. And so as the sun set and the lights come up, the kids are delighted to see their own lanterns shining um, and lighting the, the table. It's a, a beautiful event. There's no charge for the event, just a free will offering. Everybody is welcome. At Outpost in Milwaukee, staff noticed that customers were using the word love when they were talking about the co-op. So they decided to celebrate that love. On the co-op's website are numerous images of people with the I Love Outpost sign telling their story of the difference the co-op has made in their life, of why they love the co-op. These images also appear in the store, in ads, in the co-op's publication as a way to celebrate love and a sense of belonging that people get at Outpost. These stories are not unique. Your co-op creates a sense of community. Your co-op meets people's needs for, need for belonging. Co-ops do this every day. And the world is a better place because of it. But just think for a minute about how special that is. How many businesses create an authentic sense of community for people? How many businesses offer people a way to belong? We need to celebrate how special that is. We need to innovate and be creative as we look for new ways for people to feel included, welcome, and accepted. It's what the world needs now, and we can do it.